Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here. In today's video, I'm going to be going over Navy's one month postpartum update as well as my one month postpartum update. The past month has obviously been a little crazy and chaotic, sometimes overwhelming, just getting used to life with three little ones. I'm first going to start with Navy's update and then I will get into my postpartum update and just kind of share how I've been feeling mentally, emotionally physically and then I will also move in to showing you guys what my one month postpartum belly is looking like. So Navy is one month as of March 12th and at her one month appointment she weighed seven pounds six ounces and she was born at six pounds one ounce so she has gained a total of a pound and five ounces since birth. She is in the third percentile for weight which is not concerning to her pediatrician or myself Weston, my oldest son, was the same way. He was always on the much smaller side for weight and always in like the 90th percentile for height. So he was really long and lean and she is kind of following that same pattern. At birth, she was 20 inches long and at her one month checkup, she was 21 inches long. So she has grown an inch and that puts her in the 76th percentile for her height. She is still in newborn size diapers and clothes. And funny story, actually, if you guys watched any of my baby prep videos, you would have seen that I bought size one diapers and I totally had a pregnancy brain moment and I've had two kids, mind you. I forgot that there was such thing as newborn size diapers, so I didn't buy any. And we got to the hospital, I delivered her, and then they put the diaper on her after about an hour or two after she was born. And that's when I realized that there was such thing as newborn size diapers. Um, thankfully, the hospital had some because the only ones that I had were size one. And that was just, again, a pregnancy brain moment. I just totally spaced that there were such thing as newborn size diapers. She is exclusively breastfed and I do feed her on demand. So during the day, she usually eats anywhere between two and three hours and then she will usually have about two and a half ounces of milk. At night, she goes longer stretches and she usually goes four hours between feeds. And I believe at night she usually gets between two and a half to three ounces. Um, like I said, she is breastfed, so I don't know the exact amount of ounces unless I give her a bottle, which I usually do during the day if I give her one. Um, so at night, it's really just me guessing at how much milk she gets, and I'm assuming it's around three ounces. She is a passy baby, which I'm actually really happy about. All of my kids have been pacifier babies, and I am... Very happy about that because if you guys don't know, babies who don't have pacifiers will oftentimes rely on comfort feeding, which is where they want to nurse for comfort and to soothe. And I just need that break, I need my sleep. And so giving her a pacifier allows her to self-soothe on her own and not really need me to soothe. She likes the bibs and the frigs pacifiers. I will link them down below if you guys are interested in checking out the pacifiers that she uses. Around three weeks old is when she started to get some baby acne. She still has some right now. She mostly gets it on her temples and on her cheeks. She doesn't have it as bad as my two boys did, so I would say hers is pretty mild. And I just make sure to wash her face every night with some warm water and a washcloth. And then I also do put breast milk on spots where there's acne and the breast milk seems to help clear it up relatively quickly. She has not had any cradle caps so far, but uh, as I'm looking at her head, I think some might be starting and cradle cap can happen between around two weeks to a year old. So um, I'm sure that she will develop some, but she hasn't really had any so far. Overall, she is a really, really happy baby. She rarely cries unless she is hungry or she has a dirty diaper or it's her witching hour. Her witching hour usually happens around 7 p.m. at night and I can usually get her calmed down by around 8.30 to 9. To help calm her down, I will obviously feed her, change her diaper, and then one thing that she really, really likes is her butt to be pat. So I will lay down on my bed. I will lay her head right on my chest. And if you didn't know this, this is a really great way to soothe babies. She loves listening to my heartbeat. So it kind of reminds them when they were in the womb, your heartbeat is a really comforting sound to them. So I will lay her on my chest and then she will kind of calm down from the sound of my heartbeat. And then I will also pat her butt and that usually calms her down pretty quickly. Another thing is gripe water. If she is having a really hard time soothing and it's just getting really, really bad and she won't calm down, I will give her some gripe water and that really, really helps, but I don't wanna give her too much gripe water, so I try to hold off 
if I can, but again, if she's really upset, I will give her some gripe water to help calm her down a little bit. Navy really enjoys being worn in the baby carrier. She, that's like one of her favorite things. It puts her right to sleep. She also really enjoys tummy time on her play mat. And then she also really likes being swaddled at night. <laughs> To my postpartum update i ended up gaining a total of 31 pounds during my pregnancy with navy and so far at one month postpartum i have lost 27 pounds so i have four pounds to go until i'm back at my pre-pregnancy weight that i was at before i got pregnant with her however i do want to get back around my pre-pregnancy weight that i was at with weston so if you're new here i did gain 75 pounds with my first son and I never have been able to lose it. It was never really a big deal though because I knew I was gonna be having more kids so I wasn't super um, strict on like exercising and dieting just because I knew I was gonna have more kids and I don't know, I didn't really like care. But now I think we're probably done having kids so um, I'm ready to lose all of that baby weight. So to get back to what I was at before, I got pregnant with Weston, I will need to lose 45 more pounds. So we'll see if I can do that. I don't necessarily want to be as skinny as I was before I had him. So I think my goal is to probably lose around 35, but we'll see. I know it's gonna be a lot of hard work and exercise and dieting, but I am very determined to do it. So stay tuned, wish me luck because it's not gonna be easy. <laughs> I did have the baby blues very, very bad early on with her. For the first two weeks, I cried every Every single night and I didn't know why I was crying I wasn't sad my husband was like why are you crying and I'm like I literally don't know but it's not like I was just having like a couple of tears I was sobbing it was extremely hard because as the night approached I knew that I was going to be crying and I just dreaded the evenings and the nights that kind of subsided around two weeks um, it definitely went away I think a lot of it had to do with the anxiety that I had early on. She couldn't breathe for about a minute in the hospital and ended up turning blue. And that has been something that I've been very anxious about. She did it a lot while we were home in the beginning. And so it just caused a lot of anxiety for me about sleeping. In one of my videos, I think I mentioned that I would wake up every 30 minutes to make sure that she was breathing. So I think a lot of my baby blues obviously were hormonal, but I think a lot of it also had to do with the lack of sleep I was getting between waking up every 30 minutes and obviously just waking up a lot in the middle of the night to feed her. You know, just overall the lack of sleep, I think probably had a lot to do with it. I do still have some anxiety around her breathing and I'm obviously still kind of paranoid about it and. And I check on her all the time, but I am at the point where I'm not waking up every 30 minutes to check on her. So I'm definitely getting more sleep than I was before. I did have pretty heavy bleeding early on. I had heavy bleeding and was wearing the diapers for about a week. And then after a week, I was able to downsize to just regular pads. Around two weeks postpartum, I was able to transition into just panty liners. And then right now at four weeks postpartum or a month postpartum, I am no longer wearing anything. I, my bleeding has completely stopped. Now I did think my bleeding had stopped around two and a half weeks and I wasn't really bleeding for about two days and then I started bleeding again. So my doctor said that's totally normal and what happens is that as your uterus is contracting and going back down to size, it can kind of like trick you to make you think that you're done bleeding but then as it contracts again, it'll start bleeding again. So um, she said that's totally normal, but sometimes it can do that for like a week. Overall, my recovery was much easier as far as like, like physical recovery. Um, like I said, the emotional and mental part of, of this whole postpartum experience early on, it was really, really hard for me, but I am starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I feel, I'm feeling much better. I did only have one stitch because I had a first degree tear and it was not very bad. So like I said, overall, my recovery has been much easier than they have in the past. My doctor did say I'm pretty much all healed and um, she told me that I could go ahead and start exercising again and that I could start having intercourse again, but I am someone who likes to wait at least six weeks, sometimes eight depending on how bad my tear is, but this time I feel like six weeks is probably a good benchmark for me. Four weeks still seems a little too soon. Overall, I am feeling so much better than I was two to three weeks ago, and I just wanna say that if you struggle with baby blues 
postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression, make sure you talk to someone, whether that's your spouse, your best friend, your doctor, whoever it may be, you just need to talk to someone because even though I didn't know why I was sad, just talking to my husband and even saying like, I don't know why I'm crying, but for him to say, it's okay, like it's okay to cry, you can just cry and it'll be okay. That made me feel so much better and it made me feel supported. And then talking to my doctor about it as well and her saying it's totally normal and you know if it got worse that i could try medication or therapy but i feel like i'm at a point now where i don't really need either of those things obviously if it comes back and starts to get worse then i might talk to her about my options but right now i'm feeling really great and i'm just in a really great place but if you are someone who is struggling with that Make sure you talk to someone. You're definitely not alone. I feel like that's the biggest thing in postpartum is we just feel like so isolated and so alone and it's really important to know that we're not. Okay, so really quick, I wanna show you guys what my postpartum belly is looking like. So I do have this bump, but this is obviously sucked in with my yoga pants. So if I pull them down, you can see I do have some flab here these stretch marks up here, these are new from Navy. So I carried her much higher. So I got these new stretch marks up here that I've never had. All of my stretch marks that I had with my boys are down lower. And then I do have some stretch marks on the sides. I don't know if you guys can see them. And then over here as well. So yeah, that is what my stomach is looking like one month postpartum. All right, you guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like postpartum and baby updates, make sure to give this one a thumbs up. If you are not yet subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below. And let me know down in the comments if you guys have ever struggled with baby blues, postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression. I just want everyone who watches this video to know that if they struggle with that too, they're not alone. All right, you guys, I will see you in my next video. Yeah, you keep thinking it's right to